Hello, this is KR Rickbot, and this is my 2021 end of the year into the new year vid. I've had a good year reconnecting with America, and getting through an AFA degree, and in the meantime, and I've enjoyed venturing into the world of the credit. Starting off with a small credit line, and have successfully paid off every month. But what happens when it gets bigger and more responsibility, then you have to use it for more than just these things. And so I've gotten more Hasbro Transformers than my main content Korean Transformers because even though they're absolutely non-existent over here, they're still pretty common in that area so their demand is not as much of a priority as store exclusives, regional exclusives. And so I prioritize the Hasbro Transformers that can't be found in Korea over the standard retail Transformers that some of them can be ordered in Korea and if I wanted I could just order them there and have them stockpiled and stored over at that house. And these are my top 10 acquisitions of this year, including things not released in 2021, just acquired for me this year. It's mostly ranked by demand and scarcity, with a few entries based on the quality or appeal of the toy itself. And most of these numbers are going to be for a collective sub-series, with one pick as the best one and maybe second or third place. With that said, here are the numbers on what I got and what I like. A good portion of the 2020 Transformers store exclusives. I was able to get at retail price at their retailers because I came into America at the right time. And then they soon sold out and they were so short packed in America and also supply chains that the aftermarket ones kind of doubled and tripled in price. I'm really thankful I was able to get them at the regular price, otherwise, objectively, they might not be the best build quality, but because they are in the modern times, they have much more demand than their older versions. So the very first Transformers I got back here in the USA are Ironhide and Prowl. My very first pre-order too. I knew I definitely wanted these, but I thought the Dirge and Ramjet would be there for a while. Boy, how we were wrong. And in no particular order, but in relative order, Siege Ratchet for $50 on eBay, including shipping. That's pretty affordable to compare to what he goes for in other places. It all depends on the generosity of a seller. Runabout. And Runamuck. Hot Link. Decepticon Sound Blaster. Thrust. Almost missed out on getting this at offline retail because Warranty! Thundercracker and Skywarp in January. Even if this Thundercracker has a unique issue of no painted silver side and a rather gunky Skywarp head. <laughs> Best of Kingdom. This is all the Kingdom stuff I got. Only these two are regular retail, the rest are Amazon or Target exclusives, and Cyclonus, which is in Korea. And I got all the cores because Hasbro Korea has never sold any of the Micromasters or cores. So of all this very limited capacity, which one I think is the best? I guess I'll have to go with Tigatron, one of those late wave toys. Those late wave toys that you may have some hard pressed luck finding local online, but I, I guess I had the foresight to order this through the Hasbro Pulse. Yeah, pretty great colors in spite of the yellow fur. I guess I'm, I'm okay with the yellow fur to be honest. And overall pretty sturdy joints, like pretty tight joints throughout. I guess the little nitpick I have is like the nose. The nose looks like he had a boop, a really liney boop. And I wish the gut gun had a better storage than just sticking out from the bottom like a gut gun. Oops. But yeah, I think of all the ones I got, I think uh, Kingdom Tigertron is the best one. Maybe I would have also liked Slammer if I bothered securing one of those. But maybe later. And of course, Core Soundwave is the best core class figure to many. And also the one with the most demand and the most rise in demand price. But I just have one caveat with this, just one pick, nitpicking. Dent in the arm because I swiveled it in the upward elbow position because his arms are too square. If they were too round and 
didn't have to have the risk of nicking. I would think this is the best. It's still very great, but I wish these were not so nickable. Beast Machines Raptoricon. To go with the recent release of the new Kingdom Maximal T Rex, the EV red repaint of the Predacon Megatron. Found it on in just a traditional auction on eBay for like 35. It was actually a bundle of two. But for each of them was 35. I guess that's okay for like this pretty old toy this is this, this is very old like a 23 year old toy and handling this old deluxe thing yeah it's a, it's kind of antiquated i mean it's really it's rubbery it is the rubbery kind of plastic pretty soft plastic soft warpable plastic and also that chrome that easily flakeable green on the chrome and transforming it is rather creaky And yeah, one of those things, I, can, I just really feel like I should be careful handling it or else I might get chrome flex on my fingertips. And it's a pretty weird looking old deluxe toy. I mean like a transmittal upgrade of Dinobot. And in these more muted dark blue and sea green, sand green colors. I mean, the big shoulders, those giant shoulders are always the thing for robot designs, and this giant leftover robot weapon tail that can only hold on to his really misshapen claw hands. Yeah, but it is one of the Beast Machine's Dinobot characters. But at least I got this relatively rare Beast Wars toy to go with the new Maximal T-Rex toy. Which, in the end, I got for way less than retail price. So as the eBay lot was for two, this was the other thing that came with it. And I think I actually enjoyed just playing with Beast Machine's Black Arachnia more. Just, I guess it's, it's just much more poseable and has a maybe a simpler transformation than that fiddly Dinobot Raptoricon. Pretty nice Toyetic colors just for the toy, not, not regarding the show. Some interesting engineering elements of the old days, like these completely enclosed mushroom swivels. No sorts of cuts or air holes, I guess it's just like soft plastic just fused in there. And these interesting metal pins punched in there and her four-legged mode. Which actually have metal braces in them. Not screws, just metal braces. That's something you really don't see in Transformers toys. Yeah, so I got this for Raptoricon, for T-Rex. But I do like a, a Black Arachnia as a toy. I guess I was considering selling her, but I'm um, not sure. Not sure if I actually want to just... Or if anyone would be interested in picking this up in this age. To complete a Beast Machines Maximal Collection. And yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to continue getting the Beast Machines Maximal team because they're relatively, but reasonably expensive these days. And I guess some of them are, might be a little old, might have worse plastic than this. Yeah, I guess I'll just stick with these two for now. Yeah, but this is one of my top picks of 2021. A very old toy to go with a 2021 toy. The Galactic Odyssey Collection Botropolis Rescue Mission. So of all the five sets, I got four out of five of them, pre-ordered one of them, but pre-ordered it too late, so it got canceled. So of this set, this one is my favorite. Yeah, just a fun uh, multi-pack play set. Just two recolors, color theme recolors, and you can just, you know, mix and rematch with the 5 million media ports in limited capacity. I waited for the opportune time until I could get this for 40 on Amazon Prime Day, and then it promptly sold out, and now it's really inflated on the secondary market, so this was a good time to purchase. By fortunate circumstance, not for the ratchet. I got the Dominus Criminal Pursuit on pre-order before that. 
which was also a good call since this character was also very popular and all I, both of these are pretty popular and they're you know of course they're inflating on the aftermarket oh yeah and i got these old mech car jumbo toys for super cheap on amazon prime day and i recorded footage to review and everything but my interest in finishing that review died out as quick as mattel's interest in continuing mech hard and now just Choi Rock will n seem to be never ever doing a international venture like this again. No Hello Carbot, no mech card. They just do their own local things. Like shooting marble mech cards now. So many iterations, but only like half of the first mech card in the US and other Western countries. And it just poof. Shame. <laughs> I can now say I collected most of the exclusive to Walmart in the USA War for Cybertron Netflix Transformers Redeco series. Except for the entire C gear toy line, except for Hotlink. And some of the other deluxes that are just battle damage versions of their regular retail sales. And to pick just one, the best one in the collection, and one I would just keep if I just couldn't afford the others. Netflix Bumblebee. Yeah, mostly because it's Bumblebee that's cartoon accurate, but more like more, more so because it's a good scale model, completely realistic Volkswagen Beetle. In spite of his very contentious, lazy engineering backpack. Yeah, and I guess I was okay with Paying the extra $6.99, $5.99 shipping for orders under 35 thing, you know, you know, everybody loves their free shipping. Everyone loves trying to figure out exactly what sort of extra fluff they could add to that to get the free shipping. But because I knew this was going to be very high demand and it was just one of those lucky orders where I got an order in in the very short time span of very high demand of ordering like a flash restock. So yeah, like accurately proportioned Volkswagen Beetle car. It could be 143 scale, I think. It's it, a little underside compared to typical deluxe cars, but yeah, but this is a great Bumblebee toy. Number two is Netflix Soundwave. Yeah, both of these were ordered at Walmart.com in a very short time span and a restock in December. This was in December. This came in. Uh, this was ordered in December. It arrived in January, so I guess this is 2021. This is like a 2020 honorable mention. But besides the point, yeah, this is what everyone wanted. Just a plain old box sound wave. But I guess they do have some issues. Just maybe being just a retool, it doesn't. It doesn't exactly sit in flush. With the back so yeah without the accessories or the hands holding it together it's an imperfect box because this thing was not designed to be a perfect box and also the front tabs yeah i got them right here but if you're not if it's not in the exact right position they'll just pop off easily because i guess very tight softer plastic tabs that are unpainted with the rest of it but otherwise, the definitive, affordable, mainline skill sound wave everyone was asking for, and who knows if they'll do something like this again. Third place for most scarce or most desirable, um, the Earthrise Nemesis Prime. I just didn't initially go with this because I already have the Power of the Primes version, which has most of those accessories just, you know, re-transferred over here. But when it sold out, it sold out for a while and just, you know, got inflated to like nearly 50% more, like 100, 100 plus. And so when Entertainment Earth had a surprise 2021 December restock of this thing at regular retail price, I just jumped on it and not 100 plus. Otherwise, I would never get it. Along with some other pretty high demand Transformers exclusive stuff, you know, always has been. This is a pretty enjoyable, if rather intuitive transformation. Just like the Siege Optimus Prime, which wasn't retail in Korea, but I missed out on it. But then got it for super cheap on Amazon, which is apparently an Amazon exclusive only in the U.S. now. Yeah, and I, and I guess I enjoy this more than the, the proportions and transformation, at least, than the Earthrise Optimus. I do like the darker blues of the Earthrise Netflix version of Optimus. And with a better color matching in the legs. But you cannot deny his proportions got a little misconstrued, like... 
really short arms and really long legs and really short torso. And also the accessories he came with. They shield drawn just snapped on me. If I didn't get this for 30, I don't think I would have. This is only the second thing I've ordered from Entertainment Earth. The other being the Thundercracker and Skywarp. I could never really bother getting anything from Big Bad Toy Store. I mean, it may have taken an entire week to ship from one end of the continent to the other, but it was worth it. Potent Dog Card Games. What in the world is this, you're wondering? Well, yeah, it's a, it's a real Korean thing, a real local Korean new thing. From the makers of Tobot, Retrobot Animation Studios. So that's why I followed their next project after they dropped off of Tobot. And Korea sure does love giveaways and contents for their new launch of products. Even in America, I decided to take a go at one of these competitions, and I guess out of circumstance for and fortunate luck and generosity, I was able to win a full set of this new starter card deck product that Retrobot made. I'm not a card game guy, I have to actually study the card game rules and such, and I also have to study the Korean, but since I'm still following Retrobot to some extent, I just I wanted to review the Potent Dog series and the card game eventually. That's my next big project, depending on how much time I'm able to put into it with the other stuff. While the kids and some overseas collectors were anticipating the 2021's Tobot V Season 3, I just went ahead and just made the reviews just for last year's characters, but in the mini scale. I have the first wave of Tobot V Season 3, I'm just saving that for 2022, a whole year later. But of all these releases, Tobot Mini Classic or Paragon is the best. Also, Tobot Galaxy Detective Season 2 is now on Netflix. Before YouTube this time. So it's currently paid subscription exclusive. That's a first. The Season 2 minis have been great, I think even more than the Season 1 minis. I mean, some of them have upgraded articulation for the sake of simplification, which turned out really good in the long run. This design is very interesting and appealing. The knightly car, the knightly robot that transforms into an antique car, an antique classic car. Very cool, and it has slight articulation improvements and parts forming reducing improvements. And it's still not the most posable, but it still is very posable. That's also very, yeah, it's also very downside, so it's not a big car if you don't have that space. So if you only had to pick one of these, I would definitely recommend getting this yeah, either from eBay or the Korean shops. Or you could wait until Amazon.com releases their localized Tobot minis. It might take a couple of years. But in any case, this makes my 2021 top list. But my best pick for the 2021 Tobot V Season 3 toy? Here's a teaser. Not Hello Carbot Terrajet and not Hello Carbot Tego in colors based off of another Chinese toy line, but the opposite colors make them fan-made evil versions. Shattered Glass alternate universe versions. One of the few things I got from Sir Toys, although I'm figuring out that in some cases it's probably more affordable to get some of the officially branded stuff from China, from AliExpress. But Sir Toys sometimes finds things that are off the grid, no branded products, just maybe just complete street, local, unmarked, unidentified knockoffs. And I think these two fit in the category. There are no listings for this on AliExpress or other JD or Taobao that I can see. So these are cheap, one-of-a-kind things that only a really big fan of this particular franchise would be really interested in. Speaking of Shattered Glass, I am getting that collection going. Just have Megatron, and I was interested in the Shattered Glass Prime and Ratchet Pack that was at the point of selling out and getting inflated. Then I decided to secure one from the Chosen Prime in June. 
but didn't couldn't think of any other stuff like, because I'm not into third party so I had to so I decided to wait out the roller stash for like six months for the entire six months then decided to order something in November and I'm letting it go in limbo because apparently I ordered roller stash and they actually did not stash one copy of that shattered glass set you had one job chosen prime roller stash not gonna really try it again Two bots, two bots, and two bots. Ever since the Generation 1 two bots were fading out in 2017, 2018 to make way for the second generation and complete shift of two bots to two bots, you know that. It was pretty hard pressed to find new in box two bots. I mean, there are plenty of these old two bots in the secondary thrift stores, but that doesn't quite do for the collector. Of course, I found that Amazon constantly restocks these Tobots. It's almost like an evergreen thing. An evergreen thing with a serialized limited story. I mean, they constantly come into stock, but they are so popular, they sell out just as quick. And then there are several months when they are out of stock for a while, and then they suddenly they get limited restocks. But it looks like some of these certain toys will never be restocked, and some of them that are not restocked, they just disappear off the face of Amazon. And truth be told, I bought more in-box car bots than toe bots because I didn't really get into the toy collecting period until car bot came into the fray. But I didn't really collect much of the toe bots during their first three years by itself. The wider availability of the car bots also was a motivating thing to get those in the boxes, but not these new in-box. Several opportunities came, but I just really didn't feel like dropping 50 on each of them, even in the day. I guess nowadays you would have to drop like hundreds for a new inbox or only the used secondhand ones except on Amazon and presumably other international markets where they're still making these but not in Korea except when they pick a certain one to make it a special occasion exclusive to one retailer. But yeah, I'm glad I got another opportunity to get some of the more common versions but new but new inbox versions of the classic Tobot characters. I mean, the original Korean versions would be much more valuable. And I wonder how long Amazon and Young Toys can keep producing these and how long profitable can it be? Can they really keep feeding off of the new kids born every day? Oh, and this thing, yeah, I got a new inbox to watch the, I haven't opened it, I haven't even opened it yet. Just couldn't think of a good time to review it. And I missed an opportune Korean holiday time to review it. I don't know if I'll ever unbox it and once it's unboxed it's hard to get it back in its position because it's no plastic trays it's just the twisty ties but who knows maybe aliexpress could still have some of those official toe bots a few smattering of official entries amongst all those knockoffs the hello carbot super patron set as sold in china the original korean super patron set was pretty great but when the Chinese market released their own version in 2021 and I found out it was a downscale version I just had to get it and there's a school bus transformer and a fire truck transformer that scale appropriately with most small scale cars and as someone who really likes their transformer robot cars to be in scale I really like this set for its size and affordability like both of them together cost as much as one of the original Korean sets but with that budget cut, there are a few caveat simplifications, like some lack of articulated joints that have to be self-modified. Knee joints, and yes, some joints that are not not quite secure because they don't have the ratchets or the extra secure points. Yeah, that's that leg ratchet's not the best. And no ratchet in the arms. It doesn't come with police car and ambulance robots. And compared to the bigger and taller Korean Super Patron, I think this size is still big enough, but not overly big if you think the Korean size one was too big. A recommended gift that you can get from AliExpress. Best 2021 Hello Carbot toy newly released in Korea? Well, there really wasn't that much. You know, the first half of the year was just auto-transforming Hello Carbot Bang, and the second half of the year was Hello Carbot Samba. And I have a couple of them coming on the way, shipped in the most inefficient way possible. But what I've got, uh, I guess I'll just have to reluctantly say that uh, Guardian's the best one that I've reviewed and bought. 
Yeah, it is very dumpy. It, 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 it is auto-transforming. It has limited articulation. It has articulation, but limited. But at least it's fun to play with, I guess. Despite its weird proportions and such. As okay as Giant Lola looks, I think it's very basic. It's a very basic combiner that I don't think many people had that much satisfaction in. Well, there was also that small Hello Combat Mini Legends goodness. So, for the one released actually in 2020, there was only like three of them. I guess I like Unicruiser the most, just like that big old giant robot action figure that has mostly the same articulation. But pretty simplified to, the, just, to just its essentials. But still pretty good small non-transforming action figure. I guess I like the leaner, more agile look of just the sword of Unicruiser than these other two. I guess they're pretty bulky with their accessories. I guess this one just more seems more nimble. But the previous wave before that did come out in November of 2020, so I guess this could be like an early 2021 thing. So of that wave, I like Mini Iant the most. Just a nice little utility truck. Pretty big spacious space to for some little roleplay. And just about as articulated as the bigger toy. Which is not much in the arms. But it's pretty ar articulate in the legs. Even the transformational ankle tilt. And big knees. And pretty big size for the legends. Yeah, all around this is a pretty playable robot truck. And is there a 2021 release Hello Carbot toy that I would have liked to get? Well, I think I would have liked to get that Golden Pentastorm. That pretty old mold was still a pretty great classic big toy to play with. But that is very big. And Zaba King Guider. That looks like a fun double combiner and vehicle and armor up playset. Lots of playability there. Transformers Legends Gajinrai. For the first ever TFCon I was able to go to, the certain toys I wanted to get, my exact specific wish list wasn't there, but I just ended up getting several small stuff that piqued interest and hoping to get at least one big centerpiece thing. So perusing through the common stuff, the rare stuff, the old stuff, the used stuff, the large expensive stuff, the small expensive stuff, the rare justifiably expensive stuff, and the unjustifiably expensive stuff, I decided that this set was relatively worth its size and money. And this would make a good complimentary piece and uh, starting the Transformers Super Robot sub-collection with the upcoming HasLab Victory Saber. And since that was $200, I guess I was okay with also dropping $200 on this. But handling this used complete box toy, I don't think it really is going to be on the same standard as Victory Saber. I mean, some of these connections are rather thin. I mean, these these are some rather panel thin connections and doesn't have all the best joints like these big heels, these floppy heels. And these rather paper thin wafly arms that you really have to kind of tab in correctly for it to barely hold together. And since this was a retool of a toy that wasn't intended to work like this, some of the things don't work as intended. And yeah, some of these some of these panels are really thin. I think I spent several minutes trying to rotate all of these god bomber panel pieces to configure into this exact backpack shape, and I'm afraid some reckless Transforming might really warp those thin plastic beams and you, and you see the heels. These heels, these non-ratcheted heels are really not lending it to good stability. But I suppose it looks good standing and balancing there. And the other options would be some slightly more expensive third-party offerings, heavily stylized, but I'm not into third-party. But I anticipate displaying this alongside Victory Saber in the winter of 2022. And maybe some other big baddies. I'm not sure which Decepticon Overlord I might want to get, or maybe even that Black Zadok. Speaking of which, I should have made a TFCon video, but I was planning to do it all in Korean, just for the Korean audience, with subtitles. It's research to make a comp competent Korean script, 
and I had other v and I would rather work on other videos, so that plan fell through. And it's going to be weird to release that kind of video months after that event, so... Here's some samples. So those were my top 10 categories and my picks for each one. And now for the KR Brickbot channel year in review. Since I'm in America and I don't plan to review the Transformers and I'm just not as motivated to get as much stuff from Korea over here to the States, my video input has just been really significantly less than last year, but I guess that's fine. I'm just taking it slow for a while while I'm doing graphic design. So in January, I just put out six Hello Carbot minis. I did absolutely nothing for February. Then in March and April, I did a couple of Tobot reviews from Amazon. Then I ordered some stuff from Sir Toys in June and July and started reviewing some of the Chinese stuff. And then in September, I finally shipped out one big shipment instead of small shipments. I think that could have been... A the shipping cost would have been either or, I think. But anyway, I decided to do it all at once, and then with that big catalog, I just put out at least one review each week, or if it was optimal, two each week. Still had other stuff to do. And just alternating with a Carbot, Tobot, Carbot, Tobot. Took a while all the way to the end of December. And then later, I had the idea to show off the Transformers I got through just shorts, like wordless shorts, just showing off the poses and transformations. Some of them do moderately well with the unsolicited younger audience, I think. I strive to finish two of my big media project reviews th that are not just about the toys, just the Korean TV shows. So I finally managed to put out my Tobot censorship big video essay in April. Like, just keeping those Tobot releases in April with, you know, their, their general anniversary of that franchise. Anything that goes over 1,000 is a pretty good success compared to the couple hundreds, but I don't think it really had the big impact I guess I was hoping it was. I don't think it really reached that much outside of my target audience, and I don't think it really had any newcomers coming in, and I think the viewers who watched it already knew of the major dub differences. I was just the first one to make it a YouTube video. I think I played the sarcasm there a little too high, that might have been a turnoff. And I don't think it really reached the people who are into Tobot just for the toys. But not really the show, because who has time to watch a kid's cartoon? Maybe I should do something more short form with the Tobot show. Just like a clip compilation, yeah, that, those obviously will. And my second media project is the Korean dub of Beast Wars. It's just a small addendum to my 2019 Transformers in Korea big mega video. That one did moderately better than average, but not the thousands. I mean, I'm trying to reach a very local audience in a language they don't understand. I mean, I should have made it all Korean and really committed to the captions, but I don't think I really captured that Korean audience I could be investing in, but I just don't have the time to. At least I got the attention of the seller I got those VHS tapes from. So what are my plans for 2022 other than my graphic design? Yeah, I plan to put out at least two more big Korean TV show media reviews. I have one I have in the back burner for years now, but I just didn't have the time to finish it up. So I guess I hope to finish up that review for a really unknown Korean robot franchise. And an even bigger project, Retrobot's newest Korean IP franchises. I hope to do a big retrospective on that. I haven't even gotten started on it. It's, it's gonna be a big undertaking. It might come out in 2023 or the end of 2022, I hope. And then my regular, regularly scheduled Korean toy reviews, which still take a big chunk out of my time more than I think it should. I really tend to over-edit those kind of reviews. And I would like to thank all the subscribers and viewers and kudokja helping to slowly up that subscriber count. And even though I may have not made that much this year thank you for sticking around this has been my 2021 personal retrospective now on to 2022 it's probably going to be similar to this year where a local majority reacts to events and the most of the majority follows along just because that's how the world is but for now this is kr brickbot signing off the korean american who sometimes makes out korean toy and tv content but for not the kids <laughs>